but it's not really enough to be able to get as much as you want to in a diet. So we have to take the supplements coming from uh, different sources. Now there are two types of vitamins. You have the fat soluble as well as the uh, water soluble. Water soluble is vitamin C and B complex. Next slide, please. And the fat soluble vitamins are your ADEK. And these are known as fat soluble vitamins because they dissolve in fats and oils. And these are absorbed along with fats in the diet and can be stored in the body's fatty tissues. They come from plants and animals or dietary supplements as well. Today, we're gonna to talk about our water soluble vitamin, which is vitamin C. And when I talk about vitamin C, I do not mean ascorbic acid, I mean alkaline vitamin C, okay? Which I have studied for all these years, I think from 1997 to the present, I'm still studying it. There's still a lot of things that are coming out in in favor of vitamin C. Although a lot of doctors are not going to are not going to say that this is effective because vitamin C lang yan, pag ininu mo, lalabas lang yan lahat, di ba? So uh, not everybody ha has studies about vitamin C. So let's go now to what are the, what is vitamin C? What is our sodium ascorbate? First, we talk about immunity. What is immunity? It is the ability of the body to resist a particular infection or toxin. The ability of the body to resist, okay? Bacterial or viral infection or fungal infection. And these are taken up by the action of specific antibodies or sensitized white blood cells. That is immunity, ability of the body to resist. Now, immune system is the body's defense mechanism. It's the overall defense mechanism of the body, which can effectively keep out the usual bacteria and viruses at bay. So, ibaho yung immunity. Immunity is the ability of the body. Immune system is the body's defense mechanism. Yung, yung pinakabuuho, mga pinakabuong system uh, mechanism natin, okay? That is immune system. So do not interchange that. Next slide, please. Now everybody talks about free radicals. What is a free radical? It is an uncharged molecule, which is highly reactive, having an unpaired valence electron. Mm -hmm. These are unstable, mm -hmm. excuse me. These are unstable molecules that can damage the cells in the body. Can we have the next slide, please? Now, okay. You have here a picture of your antioxidant. What is your antioxidant? Vitamin C. Okay, alkaline vitamin C. This is your free radical in, on the right side if you're looking at it. Now, Electrons are supposed to be paired. You get this, two and two and two. You cannot have only one. That means it is an unpaired electron. When it is unpaired, pag isa lang siya, nagwawala. Hindi pwede mag-isa, kailangan dalawa sila. Okay? Now, pag wala yung isa, yung isang nag-iikot, Pareho sila nag-iikot, no? pero hiwalay. Kakabit yan sa ibang normal electrons, which is paired. Okay? So yung dalawa magiging tatlo, yung tatlo magiging apat, which is not supposed to be. So what happens is you keep on doing this, lumalaki ho yung uh, pinagkabita ng 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Lumalaki na lumalaki. That is what is a free radical. That's what makes a free radical. Now, an antioxidant, which is our uh, vitamin C, as well as the glutathione, you will notice later, that 
our antioxidant is donating an electron to the unpaired electron para siya maging dalawa. Hindi, hindi siya mag-iikot, maghahanap ng kakabitan. As I've always said, bawal ang kabit. Diba? So, ngayon, para hindi, hindi maging kabit yung isa, magdo-donate ngayon ng isang electron ang antioxidant natin. Depende kung ilan na unpaired electrons na nandyan. Depende kung gano'ng kadami ang antioxidants natin. So, yung pupuntahan ng electron na galing sa antioxidant depende sa dami din ng unpaired electrons sa free radicals. That is why you call this an unpaired antioxidant. And that is what our vitamin C and glutathione will do. They donate electrons. We are an electron donor. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, okay, uh, acid and base. Basically, we would see this as um, the best the best uh, way of doing this is by litmus paper. You have pH of acid is below seven naturally. Our ascorbic acid is only about 3.5. So that means it is very acidic. Whereas the base or alkaline is more than seven. Seven is neutral. And then um, we can get as much as 8, 13, 13 pH if we have a lot of our alkaline vitamin C. The next way you can determine which is acid and base is by litmus paper. Litmus paper is, uh, it, it turns blue. I mean, it is blue and then it turns to red, it is acidic. If it is red to blue, it is uh, alkaline or base. Next slide, please. How do we boost the immune system? We exercise. When you exercise, we contribute to a healthy body. You decrease the blood pressure. You maintain your body weight. You increase your endorphins, which is your happy hormone. And it, prove, it, in, it improves the general well-being. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Then you avoid smoking. Then you avoid as much as alcohol. I'm not saying that a lot of people still drink, but you can drink moderately. When you drink, huwag naman yung one to sawa, di ba? So yung, yung pag-inom nyo ng beer, siguro one bottle a day or two bottles at the most. Huwag one case a day. You can have one uh, shot of your heart of your uh, ano yun, yung, yung mga bourbon or scotch a shot or two a day but you know it's best not to make it a habit to be drinking every day you can have a glass of wine every day kunyari nasa ano tayo nasa euro kunyari winter pwede kang mag ano mag red wine red wine or white wine depende what you like to drink or champagne if you want to do that. But I would not encourage drinking because it's not uh, a good habit to, to do. Can we have the next slide, please? You have to sleep as much as you can, seven to eight hours, and you have to avoid stress as much as you can, although uh, stress is not usually, you cannot usually avoid stress because, uh, in, in many ways, every action that happens in the house or just in your vicinity may cause stress. One is uh, within the house, you have children who are fighting. You have people who are shouting at each other. So we don't like that. That's stress already. Now, you have students who have to, uh, who will have their exams. So that is also stress. 
And then you as a parent probably will have to help her out or help him out as a, uh, you know, give him, give him some food or probably coffee or help her out in, in so many ways so that she becomes unstressed. In that way, you become the stress person and she becomes unstressed. Yung estudyante mo magiging unstressed. Uh, wala kayong pera, wala kayong... Uh, Walang damit na maganda. I mean, these are small things, but they, you, it can cause stress. Next slide, please. Now we have a lot of ways of uh, dieting. We have to eat healthy. Meron akong kakilala na ano, hindi pwedeng kumain kung walang baboy o walang beef. Pag walang pagkain, pagka, pag, pagkakain na, asa ng baboy? Asa ng beef? Kung walang baboy, beef. O kaya chicken. Pero usually it's, it's pork and beef, which is not good. Especially when one has cardiovascular disease already. Uh, the best thing to eat would be fish and vegetables. If your food is rainbow, you know, uh, it has rainbow colors, meaning you have a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, meaning the rainbow colors you have in your food. You have green leafy vegetables. You have carrots, which is orange. You have, uh, you have beans, black beans or red beans or white beans. You can have this. These are very good food to eat. Another is fish. The best fish to eat is salmon because it, has, it is high in omega-3. You can cook it any way you want to. There's so much salmon around. Others are like blueberries, raspberries, all the berries that you can think of, strawberries. Uh, they're very good for flavonoids. And these are strong antioxidants. You can have turmeric or ginger, garlic. These are antioxidants, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory. Carrots, uh, sweet potatoes. Laman niyo ba kung ano sweet potatoes? Kamote. Yung magandang kamote is the orange or the yellow. So you can eat that instead of rice. You can eat that and have a good feel with it. And then, uh, or you can have black rice or the red rice. Why? Because these are unpolished rice. Red rice and black rice are unpolished. Wala ka nang, uh, madaming fibers yon. So it's good bulk. It fills you up easily. And you don't look for food after that. Okay, you have broccoli, tomatoes, citrus. These are all high in vitamin C. You have cereals. Now, oh, one thing with cereals is you, you have to look at the box. Read the box so that we know how much sugar there is. Most of the cereals have a lot of sugar. Some have 280, 250. If you can get a box of cereals with less than 150 uh, sugar, then that would be the great one. But Keep away from the 250 onwards, okay? Now, uh, we like mushrooms and yeasts. Why? Because it is high in D-glucan. And this has been shown to be an immunomodulator, which also helps in the prevention of high cholesterol and diabetes mellitus. So you can have your mushrooms. Your mushrooms, your hindi yung can, okay? Kailangan yung fresh mushrooms. Madami tayo yan sa supermarket. I think, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't go to market. So I don't know if they have this in the market. Yung fresh mushrooms. You can ask your helpers or you can, if you like going to market, then look for the fresh mushrooms. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, okay. The... Difference between ascorbic acid and sodium ascorbate. Both are water soluble. Like I said, the pH is, ascorbic acid is up to 3.5 only. When you have the sodium ascorbate, it's 7.5 to 8. Depends 
depends actually on how much of your sodium ascorbate you take. If you have only one, one capsule three times a day, you get only the 7.5 pH, which is not enough to help you in your digestion, to help you in your detoxification, to, to help you in many ways, okay? Uh, ascorbic acid is absorbed through the gastrointestinal tract, but not all of it is taken up by the gastrointestinal tract and not all of it is taken into your system so that it only stays in your GI for about three to four hours. Whereas your sodium ascorbate is absorbed through the lymphatic system, which is part of your immune system. Lymphatic system is part of your immune system. So that if you take at least four capsules three times a day, then you can have three times a day, huh? because the vitamin C only stays for about eight hours in your body if it is not used up, if not all of it is used up. So you have 24 hours to be able to protect yourself. So you take it for three times a day. That is why you have to take it three times a day. So if you take four capsules three times a day, you are protected for 24 hours. So even if it stays only in your lymphatic system for eight hours, you still have 16 hours for as long as you take it three times a day, okay? Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, vitamin C or sodium ascorbate. It is a water-soluble antioxidant. It is involved in biosynthesis of collagen, carnitine, and a neurotransmitter in vitro. In vitro meaning it is in test tubes. What is carnitine? Why is it so important? Carnitine is involved in metabolism in most mammals and plants and some bacteria. It transports it transports long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria to be oxidized for energy and production, energy production and also participates in scavenging byproduct or toxic products of metabolism. Please note this, this is very important because carnitine, because uh, mitochondria has something to do also with your glutathione. So if you have carnitine, it, is, it transports long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria to be oxidized for energy production and also participates in scavenging byproducts or toxic products of metabolism. Therefore, scavenging meaning it is involved in detoxification. That is why we want to connect your, your vitamin C, your sodium ascorbate with glutathione because of its interaction. You would notice that they interact very well. That helps your body increase its immunity, increase its immune mechanism, and it improves your general well being. Okay? So, here it says scavenging of reactive oxidants, which is your free radicals. All right. It improves endothelial function, known to be an electron donor for eight human enzymes. We took it up earlier. Electron donor. Remember when the valence, when the electrons uh, uh, separate, yun dalawa nagiging isa lang, tig-isa sila. So you have an antioxidant that will pair with the unpaired electron. It participates in collagen hydroxylation and amino acid biosynthesis. This is something to do with all of your uh, bodily function, your enzyme functions and all that scavenger, okay. Against reactive oxygen, which is your free radical. Next slide, please. What happens when you have uh, an inadequate intake of vitamin C in the system? If 
your vitamin C is very, very low, and I mean alkaline vitamin C, you will have scurvy. And these are what happens to your body. You have ecchymosis, meaning there is bleeding, bleeding around the eyes. You have hyperkeratosis. Yung, yung paa nyo, yung ano, kumakapal. Kumakapal, uh, dumadami yung ano yan, yung yung uh, yung parang kalyo na hindi naman kalyo no so kumakapal yung 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 skin ng paa petechia and ecchymosis are the same because these are also bleeding pinpoint bleedings in the skin this comes from your uh, capillaries capillary bleeding yan. next slide please look at look at what happens to the teeth you have inflamed and bleeding gums, and then the teeth are not properly, uh, they don't grow properly. So, sungki, sungki, may ganon, may ganyan, meron, meron, tapos meron kulang. Those are, that's what happens in uh, scurvy. Then again, you have perifollicular uh, hemorrhages, the same, particular hemorrhages, or sometimes small arteries, uh, break. That's why you have this. That's a knee. Uh, tuhod. Okay. Then you have joint effusion, meaning uh, there is pooling of the blood in the lower extremities. As you will see in the next slide, you have edema. You have arthralgia. You have difficulty in wound healing. You have arthralgia meaning uh, pain in the spine, pain in the joints, okay? If you have a wound, it becomes very difficult to heal. Next slide, please. Oh, th there's the edema, the pooling of blood in the lower extremities. Then you have difficulty of breathing, difficulty of uh, uh, your eyes become dry, and then there's ulceration of the uh, conjunctiva. So you also have dry mouth, you have also tooth decay. Do we still have slides? Next slide, please. And in infants, you have impaired bone growth and disturbed ossification. I mean, look at that. The one leg is smaller, the other is bigger because of the effusion. And the other one, the other leg is not developing properly. You may have hemorrhagic signs and symptoms. And not only in, in children, not only in infants, but even adults may have anemia. Remember now, anemia is not low blood pressure. Or low blood pressure is not anemia. A lot of people say, eh, may anemia hu yan eh. And I get this in, in my clinic. Eh, may anemia ho yan. Bakit mo nalaman na may anemia? Nagpa-CBC na ba? Hindi ho. Kasi ho mababa ang blood pressure. Hindi ho mababa ang blood pressure. Porque hindi mababa. Ano ba? Uh, kung yung blood pressure mababa, hindi dahil doon may anemia. Makikita ho natin yung anemia sa blood examination. Okay? And there are several types of anemia which will not deal, deal with it. Uh, can we have the glutathione slides, please? You will notice now, we will tie this up. We will tie up your GSH, the GSH, which is your glutathione, with our vitamin C, with our 24 alkaline C. Why? Because they're really super duo. Without one, with the other, makes you a well, um, you're, you will have a healthy individual. You'll be at the peak of your health, okay? If we combine these two. Now, what is glutathione? This is tripeptide consisting of three amino acids, which are sulfuric, by the way. You have cysteine, glyc glycine, and glutamic acid or glutamate. Somebody asked me last time in my lecture with this, 
uh, yung ibang ibang ano one of your uh, one of the our colleagues here uh, one of the hosts said was asking me e meron hong glutathione na glutamic acid only so that is not glutathione that is glutamic acid period when you talk about glutathione you must have the three peptides you must have the cysteine glycine and glutamic acid or glutamate because these are millimolar concentrations in most cells okay if it's only glutamic acid or is it if it's only cysteine if it's only glycine it is not it is not glutathione uh, glutathione is also known as the master antioxidant. Master, it is the antioxidant that boosts the utilization and recycling of other antioxidants, which are your vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, alpha lipoic acid, and coenzyme Q10. Remember that it is the master antioxidant and it is a substance produced by the liver. We all have this, especially when we are younger, we have a lot of glutathione in our system okay can we have the next slide please? next slide please now here are some of the food that are natural sources of glutathione you have your asparagus broccoli avocado avocado by the way you don't cook right? if you mix it with milk it's fine but if you mix it with sugar it doesn't become healthy anymore so what we do here what i do actually is i i make it into a salad or i mix it with chicken and and low-fat mayonnaise or um or uh, there's a mayonnaise that is gluten-free and no eggs so you mix it with that. You can make a sandwich with, uh, with avocado and chicken, which is very, very delicious. Then you put your lettuce, then you put your tomatoes and, and, and cucumber, make it into a sandwich. Napakasarap po. So you can try that. Okay, so you have broccoli, you have spinach, grapefruit, tomatoes, parsley, pears, carrots, lahat buyan, and garlic, lahat siyan, green apples, are sources of glutathione and they're very high in glutathione but the moment you cook them especially broccoli and spinach and garlic the moment you cook them you reduce the glutathione content by 30 to 60 percent yung garlic natin you want to cook it you know you we always cook filipinos or asian for that matter cook garlic in um in in oil isn't it Tsaka masarap yung amoy, yung amoy na gusto nyo. So nandun yan. The moment you brown the garlic, you have no more glutathione there. And you have reduced it, re reduced it to just plain spicy, nothing, nothing else. So you can, you can cook garlic a little. The moment it shrivels, turn it off and remove it. Okay? So you do not overcook it. Do not brown it. Do not brown it. But if you like garlic rice, probably you can brown it, but you don't have the glutathione in there anymore. When you cook tomatoes, uh, you lose the glutathione, but you get the lycopene. And the lycopene is the anti-cancer portion of your tomatoes. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. To boost your dietary glutathione, you focus on the following. You have whey protein. Right now, uh, there's a lot of whey protein in the market. Mm. A lot of people like, excuse me, just a whey. Mm. A lot of people use whey protein to reduce weight so that they won't be eating. <coughs> So that they won't be eating too much because it is bulk in itself. But whey protein is very high in glutathione and it's very sulfuric. It's sulfuric because of the glutathione. You have the three, the tripeptide. 
So it contains gamma glutam glutamyl cysteine, which is a glutamine bound to cysteine. It's a key to supporting higher glutathione levels in your diet. Okay, whey protein. Uh, they come in bulk. Malalaki hong mga ano yan, uh, lalagyan. Now you have allium containing foods, which are also your garlic, your chives, your leeks, etc., and your onions. Your cruciferous fruits, foods which are broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, arugula, all of this, watercress, and radishes. These are high in uh, glutathione content. The radish. You put this in your sinigang, I think, isn't it? You put this in your sinigang, but then um, it loses its glutathione content. So, because you cook it, you boil it. So the best way to cook radish, to eat radish is uh, when your sinigang, <clears throat> excuse me, when your sinigang is cooked, that's when you put your radish para pagkinain yung malutong pa yung radish. Okay, next slide, please. Now you have the alpha lipoic acid rich foods, which are your organ meats, beef, broccoli, spinach, peas, and tomatoes. Alpha lipoic acid regenerates and increases your levels of glutathione within the body. So if you eat this, I'm not telling you to eat so much of organ foods and beef. You eat more of your spinach and your broccoli and your peas and you're fine. Selenium rich foods, which are your oysters, so your seafoods, your uh, broccoli, uh, Brazil nuts, all kinds of nuts. The highest is um, uh, walnuts. Walnuts is very good. The eggs, mushrooms, organ meats, again, dairy product. But right now I cannot, um, I cannot recommend dairy products because of the increase in the GMOs and the antibiotics that are being given to cows and, and chicken. And I don't know about pork. I think pork, yes, in some kinds of pork. And some kinds of hogs are being given to GMOs because then they become fatter and there is more juice in it. But the best is, of course, the organic type, which does not have any GMO or any uh, antibiotics. So the dairy products I would recommend will be from Carabao. If you want cheese, mas maganda ho yung galing sa, sa lamb, sa sheep, or sa Carabao. Carabao milk is very delicious. Your Carabao white cheese is very delicious. That's, I love that. And then the cheddar cheeses, all kinds of cheeses are all mostly processed food. But the Carabao milk and the Carabao cheese is not processed. Okay. Can we have the next slide, please? These are very high in glutathione, remember. Now, how do we boost our glutathione? There you have it. You eat glutathione rich diet. You avoid uh, food that will prevent you from having the glutathione like processed food. A lot of us like to eat hot dogs, ham, bacon. I'm not saying you don't eat this. I'm just saying that you eat it with sparingly. You can eat your hot dog, uh, Maybe today, next hot dog will be maybe two, three weeks from now. Okay. Isang hot dog lang, ha? Isang hot dog lang. Hindi tatlong hot dog. Kasi sabi mo, ah, three weeks pa ako kakain ulit. Eh, kakain muna ako ng tatlo ngayon. No? Hindi din. Just one hot dog just to, to remove the craving for your hot dog or the ham or the bacon. So eat it sparingly. Not all the time. Your, fi your fried fatty and... Uh, Salty foods like your McDonald's, your uh, and bear, yung Jollibee, yung uh, inasal or something like that. These are all fried and fatty, so avoid them if you can. Sugary foods, 
we love we love sugar we love chocolates we love cakes and pastries and cookies and all these good things you think they are good things you can have a cookie you can have a slice of cake i'm not saying you don't you can have a slice of your blueberry cheese blueberry cheesecake or short bear, short uh, short cake strawberry shortcake any of these things that you see in in bake shops you can have them but a slice to reduce your craving and the next slice should be probably in a month or two you don't eat it all the time ice cream the same way you don't eat it every day okay if you get a chance to be able to sleep at least seven hours a day, a night, that will be great. Seven to eight, eight is fine. It's better than fine, okay? So, because if you sleep less than five hours a night, then you are prone also to getting your diabetes mellitus. Exercise at least five days a week. Not everybody can do this. So we, you have work, you have studies, you have things to do. So I would recommend at least three times a week. If you cannot still do this, try to walk at least five minutes every day. Every day. Walk five minutes every day. Around your house, up and down your house. Or as, if, you cannot, if you can do more than five minutes a day, it would be best. Mga 15 minutes, you walk around after you eat. Walk around. That will be 15 minutes already. So you don't sit and have your, your tummy getting bigger the moment you eat. After eating, you walk around. 15 minutes. That should help you in digestion. That should help your weight. That should help in reducing uh, things, uh, reducing any chronic illnesses that may set when you are not moving. Okay? Next slide, please. Now, glutathione, as I said earlier, you, you look into the, I was talking about carnitine earlier, okay? I will repeat, carnitine transports long chain fatty acids into mitochondria to be oxidized for energy production and also participates in scavenging by product of tox or toxic products of metabolism. Okay. Your mitochondria is very, very important. The more glutathione in your body, the healthier your cells are. And so is your mitochondria. The less glutathione in the body, the more likely you are to have cell breakdown. Increase in Diseases, risk in diseases, and cellular death. Next slide, please. By the way, I, I saw some advertisements that says, if you take this product, I don't know which product I, I saw, but it says, if, it takes, if you take this product, it prevents cell death. There is no such thing because cells die our cells die to be replaced by new cells, okay? And if, if, the, if you have no cell death, a normal cell death, may ipon yung, 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 uh, ano yan, yung, yung debris sa katawan natin. You know, when you, when you rub your, your skin, when you take a bath, Yung, nag, ano yan, yung, yung, y you remove the dead cells. These are dead cells. Yung pag ano yan, yung libag, libag, di ba? So, when you do that, those are dead cells. So, there is such a thing as cell death. There's a normal cycle for cells. I don't know, I don't know exactly the number of days, but for red blood cells, it's 120 days. The cells, the red blood cells die and are replaced by new red blood cells. That is how we live. And when we, when, when we uh, while we are alive, cell death is known as apoptosis. And this means that there's a certain number of days that a cell stays in your body and it dies naturally to be replaced by new cells. 
so that we don't get wrinkled at once, we don't get um, we, we don't get old at once because of the replacement of new cells. Okay. Now, the antioxidant property of um, glutathione has something to do with directly binding to oxidative, oxidative compounds that damage the cell membranes, DNA energy production, etc. It directly neutralizes a wide range of oxidants. And it is this super, super antioxidant in our body. That is why it is known as master antioxidant. Next slide, please. Now our body, all our bodies, we all have uh, liver. Liver is the main organ for detoxification, okay? That's the primary detox organ. The liver stores nutrients and filters out toxin. But it cannot just remove the toxins from our body. It has to be converted by some liver enzymes. And if it is not converted, it is not taken out by glutathione. The moment is, it is converted into a compound that can be engulfed by glutathione, then the glutathione is able to grasp this and bring it out, take it out from the body. As you can see here, that is your liver. Those are your toxins. Then your, your glutathione is being produced by your liver. And these are the, the toxins are being transformed into uh, and transformed by the liver enzymes into something that can be engulfed or grasped by glutathione to be taken out by the liver. So that we should have a lot of glutathione to be able to help the liver remove all of this from all of the toxins that have been produced by metabolism from our body. Okay? And it comes out through our urine and through our stools. That is why when you don't move your bowels where you are constipated, you don't feel well because the toxins are there. The toxins are being held by your body, which is not supposed to be. Next slide, please. Okay, now the energy production and the mitochondria. Again, your carnitine has a very uh, important uh, role here. Energy production. Now the mitochondria. Our cells have nucleus. We have at least trillions of cells in our body. That makes our body, that makes us, that makes what we are, cells. Okay, trillions of cells. Imagine kung dalawa lang ang cell natin, hindi tayo, hindi tayo tao, amoeba tayo, o kung isa lang ang cell natin, amoeba tayo, paramecium, you know, those, those things. But we are, human beings, so we have trillions of cells. And each cell has a nucleus. Each nucleus has a mitochondria. What is the mitochondria? That is the powerhouse of the body. That is the powerhouse of the cell, rather. You have carnitine, it produces and helps the mitochondria. You have glutathione, it protects the mitochondria. It protects the nucleus, it protects the mitochondria from being damaged by your free radicals. If you're smoking, if you are in a place where there is pollution, right now it's December, people in Bulacan are probably preparing now for, uh, what's this, for the fireworks and the firecrackers and all that. There is pollution in the air and that is what you inhale. So that when you inhale this, you have, oxidative process that is going on. The mitochondria is very sensitive to this. And the mitochondria produces ATP to produce the energy that each cell needs. And therefore, when each cell is highly energized, protected by the glutathione in your body, you yourself or our body is highly energized as well. We can, we can walk, we can run, we can cook, we can, we can study, we can 
exercise. We can do anything we want to for as long as there's, there's energy. However, if we are subjected to oxidative process, to free radicals, and you don't have enough mitochondria to protect your, uh, I mean, you don't have enough glutathione to protect your mitochondria, your nucleus, this pollution damages your cell, your nucleus, and your mitochondria. And when it is damaged, it produces less ATP, it produces less energy. Now, the cell becomes sluggish. Tinatamad yung cell kasi walang energy pumapasok, walang energy nagagawa ang mitochondria, or konting-konting energy nagagawa porque yung, ano, yung, um, yung pollution, nasisira ngayon yung mitochondria, na the damage, okay? So damaged mitochondria also becomes error prone. So it becomes, it produces free radicals already because it's damaged. Walang, walang, ano, walang, what do you call that? There's no protection because there's very little glutathione or no glutathione at all. So what happens is that the free radicals cause further mitochondrial damage and it will create a vicious cycle of less energy and more damage, etc. It's a vicious cycle. That is why we need to protect our mitochondria. We need to protect ourselves by our glutathione. We need to increase our carnitine because of uh, through the increase in our vitamin C or so sodium ascorbate intake to help the carnitine produce and help the mitochondria as well as to help the glutathione, okay? The harder the mitochondria has to work, the more free radicals they produce. So let us not get into this by getting a lot of glutathione through the diet and through our alcohol. Next slide, please. All right, glutathione is responsible for all of this. These are all uh, uh, functions of your body. What I'd like you to note here is that the antioxidant properties of glutathione work to improve communication between the cells so they know what's happening. Each cell has to communicate with one another to be able to find out, hey, parang neighbor yan eh, di ba? Neighbor, kapit bahay mo. Ano nangyayari sa iyo? Ito, tutulungan ka namin. These are how the cells um, communicate with each other. They stabilize and reduce oxidation in the cells. They fight free radicals and they fight, they support protein function and take out the cellular trash. Scavenging, detoxification, helping one another to be able, helping one another of each cell to be able to uh, reduce the uh, toxicity that is being placed into the body because of our existing uh, actions. Next slide, please. Okay, glutathione, Deficiency makes you vulnerable to vulnerable to oxidative stress and inflammation, both of which are markers of accelerated aging and chronic illnesses. If you have too little glutathione, then you cannot fight off damage to your cell's mitochondria. Then you start feeling tired, you start feeling sluggish. And when, they, when this happens, the mitochondria becomes rusted. There is, however, what they call now an epidemic of glutathione, um, uh, glutathione deficiency. As we are, when we are born, the levels of glutathione are very high. The moment we are born, very, very high because of our liver. The liver has pr produced a lot of glutathione. Right now, we have uh, an epidemic of glutathione deficiency in, in the world. See, 
the levels of glutathione are very difficult to maintain. Why? Because as we grow older, we produce less glutathione from the liver. And not many people know this. What people know is that glutathione is for the skin. It is for whitening. It's not just that. It is the side effect of glutathione because it helps our collagen production. Excuse me. It helps in the removal of our free radicals. It is not the final effect. It is not the effect that we want. What we want is its oxidate, antioxidant effect. So that um, some ways of maintaining your glutathione level would be weight training and aerobic exercises as well. Exercise is very important. I saw this, um, I saw an advertisement that you need that exercise, all you have to do is take this pill and in, you take it every day for one month or two months and you lose three pounds or so many pounds a day or something like that or in, in two or three days. There is no such thing as no exercise. We have to have exercise. We have to be exercising. We have to be moving our bodies to be able to be healthy, okay? Glutathione is the most critical an integral part of our detoxification process. Increased physical and mental functions are produced by increased glutathione. It increases also your muscular development, your muscle development, decreases muscle damage, and it decreases recovery time in many disorders and many diseases. Okay, is there another slide? All right, these are the uh, diseases associated with glutathione deficiency. You have Alzheimer's, you have Parkinson's disease, you have asthma, maybe even allergies, the OPD. Then you have the autoimmune diseases like uh, rheumatic, heart, rheumatic heart disease, rheumatoid arthritis, you have lupus, you have, of course, cardiovascular diseases. You have chronic related diseases. Uh, it has been noted in some studies, in a lot of studies, that cataract formation can be delayed. You cannot, you cannot totally not have that cataracts because as you grow older, your lens become, become uh, opaque or become thicker and become opaque. So at some time or another, you will have to have cataract. But accordingly, if you have glutathione, increased glutathione in your, in your system, there is delayed in the cataract formation. Now, um, glaucoma is something else that we will not discuss now. And then the liver diseases, cystic fibrosis, aging process itself will be delayed if you have a lot of glutathione. So your wrinkles will not come out at once. Your, your jaws are not going to be that bad again, that, but as much, you, you will be able to move around without any help. A lot of people I have known at the age of 60, meron na yung baston o hirap na hirap na maglakad o kailangan may taong kasama, may caregiver na at the age of 60. And they look so much older, they look like 90 to 100 years old. Why? Because there is less glutathione. Those who are so wrinkled, at 50, 56 to 60 to 65, they have a lot of wrinkles. Why? Because they have a very little glutathione and very little sodium ascorbate. Okay. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay, this is your alkahoite, 24 alkahoite. I would always recommend, especially now, you might ask me about Omicron, which is now the new variant of COVID. I don't know much about it. It has not been, uh, there has been no studies about it yet, but the most that I have read is about um, the Omicron is highly contagious, but it can be treated in the house, at home. You can be treated at home. And what is the um, 
hallmark for our treatment of any COVID case, any variant for that matter, I would say vitamin C, the sodium ascorbate, 24 alkaline C, your glutathione, and vitamin D. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it. There is no such thing as ma-overdose ka ng vitamin C, ma-overdose ka ng glutathione. No. Hanggat meron kang sakit, dagdagan mo ng dagdagan ang vitamin C mo, dagdagan mo ng dagdagan ang glutathione. 